So, okay, well, anyway, my point in all of this was is that I do notice that breakouts, you do these songwriting breakouts, but one thing I do notice is that actually a break, uh, whenever we do breakouts, um, not just at our conference, but even at, uh, we did Holland Davis's um, conference or the, the CCA um, West, how, it's got like 50 letters in it. What, what is the actual conference name? Oh, well, that's not as many as I thought. Okay, West Coast Worship Conference. Well, there's CCA and there's all these other things. Anyway, okay, the point is, is that like at his conference, which is, you know, was, a, was a, I don't know, a few hundred people, three, 300, 400 people? I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, I, I would say my class was 125, 150 people. I normally notice that songwriting classes are a bigger, popul- more po- popular like class. But I've always always wondered why it is that people who come to a worship conference that are that are musicians or worship leaders why they don't all want to go to a, a songwriting class, and the reason why is because um, songwriting is a huge pivotal, um, very important thing for the office of worship leader, in my opinion. Okay, now certainly um, David thought so too, and there's a lot of other. Um, I guess um, ministers in the Bible that we would that we could actually look at, and they they probably wrote songs. Sometimes we don't really know, but the, sing a new song. There's got to be a whole lot of them, okay? Because they were demanded these things. So this is something I think in our modern day we can look at the biblical aspect of it and 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 really go back and try to go. Well, I can only name five or whatever. So, but we can look at right now in modern day. We have everything at our fingertips to be able to write a song. They had all of the, they had all the reasons why they shouldn't write a song because maybe they didn't, they didn't even have things to physically write anything down with, you know. And and you know, like there was a lot of, there was a lot of reasons why maybe they didn't write songs. So actually, when you think of sing a new song unto him, most of the time, probably back then in in Bible times, was actually more like free praise, probably more than it was actually songs written spe- specifically. But now we have no excuse. Anybody, I mean, I'm seriously like I could give you. Um, I'm not going to show you these, but my sons, okay, they write on their little iPods songs on uh, Garage Band, okay, that sound really horrible, but also surprisingly sound really good, okay? And you have to understand what I mean. It's like, no, the lyrics aren't good and nothing, the melody's totally off key, but the rest of the instruments sound really great, which is just them going, I want a drums, I want a bass that sounds like Paul McCartney. He, they don't even know who Paul McCartney is. And they, you know, you just go down the list. Actually, my kids know who Paul McCartney is, and I think that that's cool, okay? But anyway... The point is, is like, you really can get away with, like, what you have in your hands or whatever to basically write a song. So what is, now there's no limitations and there's no reason why you can't do it, except for what your mind is telling you. Your mind is telling you that either it's not applicable to you, which I'm not pointing on, I'm not, like, picking on him or anything, or you think somebody else writes better songs than you, then why? So now there's all these, like, internal issues, which we've been talking about our internal issues all day, you know, and how we need to stop letting our internal issues be, get in the way, you know. And, and this, last, this last class that, that Ty was teaching, it was really cool because, you know, all he really did, I mean, he gave you, like, some really good just ideas of what you can do. And he, he's just basically saying, do it because you can, you know? That's like, and, and, and that's kind of like, I don't know. I think of, like, whenever I, I um, take care of, um, not, not take care of my kids, you know, that's like I babysit my kids. That doesn't really work that way. No, when I'm hanging out with my kids at home, okay, and, uh, and they're, like, my kids homeschool, so when they get done with homeschooling, you know, they legitimately for like three or four hours, you know, until the next thing we're going to do, they don't have anything to do. So they're like, Dad, can I play video games? Or Dad, can I, you know, um, watch YouTube? You know, I just, I hate YouTube for that reason because you could literally sit there and watch it for four hours and get nothing done. Um, but 
one thing I, I do notice is that they have this time. And so one of the things that, like, that, that, that would, when I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I am a worship leader and I'm a songwriter, okay? So I, granted, I have that going for me. But if my kids were to spend those four hours playing the guitar and singing and writing songs and they showed me something that they did, it would be like the coolest thing. And I would never grow old, you know? Every time they show it to me, I get excited about it. And I just kind of look at that and I go, God's kind of looking down too. And, and he's like, he's a creator God. That's what he is. And, and he's like, with your time, do something with it. Do something with it and, 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 and use your gifts. And of course, we happen to be musicians and worship leaders. So I'm, po- I'm picking on you when it comes to actually like creating music. Okay. Dare I tell you to create music at a worship conference. Right. But. I would say this to congregation. I would say this to a lot of people. Go use your gifts, whatever those gifts are. Use your time wisely and do it for the Lord, right? So I'm going to now dive into practical things, but I I just wanted to start out with, like, first of all, yes, you should. It is applicable to you. And no, nobody has written such a great song that you don't have a chance to try to write a good song. You know, you can totally do it. Absolutely can do it, and you should do it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to do your song, okay? I might not do your song. I might not think it's, you know, the right song for my church or whatever. So it doesn't mean that your songs have to be songs that are used everywhere. It doesn't even mean that your song has to ever leave your bedroom. You know, it, it's interesting. We Like um, a couple days ago, um, I had um, a couple of our worship leaders in, in my office, and they... Um, I, I just, it's so cool to see how our, our church has shifted when it comes to songwriting. Like, I feel like everybody's writing songs now. It's like happening all of the time, which is super cool. And they all come into my office and they want to show me their next song. And then they ask me, they say, so Brandon, do you have a song to show me? Because they know me as somebody who brings songs to the table. But honestly, like, all of my songs right now are personal songs. And they're all things that I sing in my own personal prayer time with God. And I actually don't want to share any of them, you know, and that's okay. So that's my point is like we all can have those as well. But this is part of, as I was saying, the word to get to know God or allow God to get to know you is you need to share your heart. And if you are a musician, if you are an artist, that means you need to play unto the Lord. You need to sing unto the Lord. And, um, you know, that means sing a new song, you know, share, you know, eat. like I said, it doesn't even have to be a song that anybody will ever hear. So I did, that's just more of like, maybe that's kind of mean to like point at you and go, you need to do it, but you really do. And, and really it's okay that nobody ever hears it. You just need to do it for your own personal health. You really do. Um, I actually want to hear, um, let's see here, Zach, you hadn't, before I came, you hadn't written a worship song when was the last time you wrote a song from the first time I encouraged you to write a song? Okay. Okay. And when you wrote your first song, which was what? Was there, is it one that we recorded? Yeah, we long for you, which is crazy that he, the first one that we wrote, we actually recorded. But what I don't want to, like, dive only into feelings, but seriously, like, after you actually poured out a song and wrote a song, what was that like to write a song for the Lord, sort of kind of for the first time, at least in a very long time? As a worship leader, you're a worship leader. Was, well, I'll say this. I felt like I was just get, like um, giving back to Lord was his in a sense. Like, I don't feel like there's a lot of ownership of it. Like, I'm, I was writing this song that I felt like God was just kind of telling me to, to write down the, the neat part, process of it. Is I don't feel like these were my creative genius. Yeah, that's like awesome. Lord was giving me something. And so it was kind of neat to have God show me something. Yeah. Okay, so in some ways, he's hearing from the Lord and he's documenting what the Lord's saying. How many of us want to do that? I mean, serious. Even if it isn't a song, even if it isn't a song, like I think all of us would dream to be able to, what, God? What's that? Awesome. You know, I think all of us would want to do that, right? So 
I think that's one thing. You know, I'll just kind of go with this for a few moments, too. Um, anybody else who wants to share your experience of the first song you wrote about God, to God, personal prayer, um, anything outside of writing it to your boyfriend or girlfriend? Okay? Anybody who wants to share what it was like to finally get the first song done? Okay? It was, uh, it was an interesting thing for me where the only song I'd really written came about a week after I watched uh, Mel Gibson's movie about the passion. And I went with my wife. I wasn't fully expecting to have a better understanding of what Jesus did. Yeah. And instead I came back saying, I am so shallow. Mm. I could have been there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have got it. Yeah. And she didn't want to talk about it at all. <laughs> so then you spend a week with that all inside and what came out of the song. That's and cool. To just reach a point where I'm so grateful to him that he paid that price for me. But it's a price that I'll never understand. Yeah. It's and good. It really, the cross was a conversation between the father and the son that I benefit from. It's not something that I'll ever, okay, got that figured out, let's move on to the next thing. So I'm going to wrap that up into something like when you're wrestling, okay? In my wrestling, in my doubt. I think about that and I go, wrestling. Like how many of us were wrestling with things that God's telling us or that we're reading or that we're experiencing in the world or um, or your your family's falling apart or your somebody died in your family and you're wrestling with why would God allow that to happen or whatever. I'm giving you lots of scenarios, but fill in your own scenario and then you're able to wrestle with it. And what comes out is not just tears or not just anger or not just, you know, what, I don't know, but you get something that was created and you get to look back at that thing even if nobody else does. You get to look back and you get to go, that had victory because, not because you wrote the song, but I get to doc, you get to document what God did in your life, you know? And so it's, it's even in your wrestling, it's important to get that done. I know, Gabe, you've got to give me a good one. Come on. Think about it. Somebody else rose, uh, raised their hand, though. Somebody else did. I saw it. You? Do you want to share? Yeah. First time I actually finished the song, it was just simply the first few verses of Psalm 57. Yeah. And it was just during a time of, I had a, I had a small coffee problem. My heart stopped. Um, and I was kind of in that recovery phase. And I remember this. Yeah. I, just was, I was just sitting upstairs in our house, and I could, my head was killing me because, you know, I was just coming down off all that caffeine and everything. And, yeah. And uh, my, uh, I just started playing. I just wanted to all I wanted to do was all I wanted to do was sing the psalms. That's all I wanted yeah. to do, and that was that moment. Mm -hmm. I just sang the psalms between myself and the Lord, and that was yeah. that was the first time I actually ever finished writing okay. a song. That was, yeah. oh my God. Okay, so another positive. Let's wrap this in to this. You're learning scripture. Not only learning scripture, you are. What does it say in the Word? It says to write it on your heart. Right? How much more could you write it on your heart than to? digest it and put it into something you've created it's now written into something that you have helped be a part of it right um i'm mentioning all this because i actually have a really good reason but uh, um gabe please give me a good one don't make it up Thank you. 
for our congregation. And I'd written like a couple of them, and they were okay. But I, I wrote one, and I thought it was okay. But that's the one that everybody started to sing, and people connected with it. And it, it was the first song where it, it was no longer my song. It became everybody else's song that they liked. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember going, that's a very humble, like that became very humble. That's good, so yeah. Yeah. So I can use two, both of those for different ones, okay? The first one is going to be that um, it was not just jealousy, but what was the last thing you said about it? The, sec the second thing, not jealousy, but then you, oh, you realize how hard it was. Okay, one thing that I say this actually a lot, you know, at conferences especially, is honestly, if you, to learn how to write a song, all it does is it makes you realize like, you start to look at all of the other songs that you're singing that are done by somebody else, and not that you dissect it in a bad way, but you start realizing, oh, that's why that's written. Oh, that's why that's written. And you start realizing that these songs have more than just a really great melody and something catchy to sing. And I know that most of you guys are probably not in that boat, but I, I, I was, so I mean, I'll be honest, like, there's definitely some songs in the beginning of my worship leading that I just really liked the melody of the song, and the lyrics weren't all that, you know, it just wasn't doing that much for me necessarily, but everybody liked it, you know, everybody connected with it. Um, I, I, you know, a good example is um, Our God is Greater. That song, I didn't like that song. I didn't like it melodically. I don't know. I just thought it was lame. That was just my opinion. I never wanted to do it, and then I had I did this like youth kind of rally thing, and the church told me uh, when you tour, you sometimes just get told what you're going to do. You don't really get a choice. And the guy says, "Well, you can do whatever you want as long as you do. Our God is greater." And I was I was like I had it had been a year and a half since that song had been out, and I had successfully not let it at that point, okay? I was doing everything I could not to lead that song. And it was purely out of stupidity, really. I just didn't want, I didn't like it, okay? Anyway, that song is awesome. Lyrically, it's really great. And I sang it, and everybody connected, and, it w and, and God showed me some really great lyrics in there, and I realized, A, it's not about me, okay? Which stinks, because it's always like that. Always reminding myself that the keys that I sing in is not about me, as Steve has many times mentioned very kindly. Um, but anyway, so the reality is, like, I, I, I needed that. I needed that experience for me to realize that, um, anyway, that, that that song was masterfully written, and there's a reason why it's connecting with people, and I should do it. And I've actually done it many, many times since that time, um, and then the second one you said was, um, what was the second one again? I, I wrote a song that uh, people connected. Oh, yeah, okay. And that was another thing, too, is you start realizing that, um, you start realizing what ones are the ones that are going to connect and which ones are not when you actually are, when you have skin in the game, you know, like when you're actually doing it and you're trying. And, you know, that's why a lot of, you know, you'd be surprised how many preachers out there actually just get a message from some higher denominational person and they just teach that that message. But as but, you know, we have quite a few senior pastors here when you actually have to teach that message yourself. The applications change to some, not maybe fully, but to your people specifically. There's, there's, a, there's something that connects not only with you, but it connects with them. And you realize, like, like, this is a big deal. You can't screw this up, you know? And it's the same thing with songs. It's like, there are songs that have bad theology. There really are. And, we, and you know, I don't tend to sing them very often, you know, hopefully. But there are a lot of churches that do, and it's just purely because it's really cool and it's on the radio and it doesn't, and it might connect, but, you know, like, it, this matters. What we're singing matters. Actually, so many times I've heard this, that people walk away with the songs memorized in their heart, in their head, uh, in their memory, way more than they're going to remember the scripture that the message is taught. And there's some crazy statistic out there that, like, whatever, it's like, you know, 
5% of your church remembers the message you, you taught, but the rest of them remember the music, or whatever it is. I don't remember. I made that up completely. But you can find something that's similar to that, okay? <clears throat> anyway, so now let's get into practical. So I, I, um, I do teach this, this, um, this way of doing, um, of writing songs. I talk about four, no, five things, okay, that makes a song. So let's just, we're going to like breeze through that because I know some of you guys have been in my class and I can really like focus a long time on these, but I'm not going to because I have something else in mind. But since a lot of you have not, let's just talk about this. Um, there are five elements that make a song. Three of them are actually the legal, um, like when you get your song copywritten, this is what they're looking for. And then the other two are, in in my opinion, the um, they're, they're, they're just as valuable as the other three, okay? And so I call them, the, they're the, my five elements of a song. So one, what do you guys think it is? Melody, but have you been in my class? Okay, good job. Anyway, so melody, I know we're going to breeze through this, and this is fine. So melody is one of them, yes. It's another one. Lyrics, another one. Well, progression, but it's, it's interesting what they call it. No, it's interesting what they call it, though. Think about it. Progression. What wraps around melody to actually make, what does your progression do to your melody? Yes, it creates harmony, okay? And that's important because you can actually have, this. the reason why these three are the legal ones is because you can have the same lyric to some degree. It's like t- 10 words or seven words. Do you know exactly what it is, Holland? What is it? You said Seven words, okay. You can have seven words, exactly the same words. You can actually technically have them sung along to the same melody, but you have a different harmony around it, and you're still not cheating the system, okay? And actually, we experienced that in two of Gabe's songs today. We got, oh, precious is the flow, not the seven. They broke, they broke rules on this one, okay? But it's a classic song, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, but then he goes, I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love, or whatever it is. Is that what it is or something like that? Um, so we sang, we sang something that everybody kind of knew, but then it changed on us, okay? But like legally, if it's a song that has been written since 1930-something or other, um, then you technically can't do that with more than seven words to the same melody, um, but you have to have different harmony. Or you have to have the seven words, different harmony, or the same harmony, so the same chord progression, but different melody. So that's why that matters. It's, it's good to know that that, that actually matters. Okay? So now let's just skip ahead. Let's just go right ahead. Um, And by the way, not only are these like the legal things that I want you to know, but actually they all truly change how you write a song depending on which one you're focusing on first. You know, technically your melody, if you're writing a melody first and you don't have any harmony and you don't have any lyrics, you're going to actually find yourself writing a specific group of words Um more than you're going to if you were to change if you were to change the harmony around it so like if you added an a minor let's say let's say uh, does anybody know the number system does everybody know the number system one person three person four okay i'm not going to go into the number system okay so we have c okay we have a minor we have f we have g standard chord progression um, that is a one a six minor a four and a five okay i'm not going to say that again but you guys will learn it tomorrow the C, if I were to write, um, let me grab a guitar. This is better. I mean, do that. You want to do it on the mic, Fred? Uh, no, it's fine. They can hear me. Right. right? What's your guitar tuned to? Normal? Yeah. Um, let me just pull up. Let me 
Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my pride, my King and my God. It's four lines. <laughs> give, give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Okay, if I were to go, um, give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. It's kind of happy sounding, right? Or I can go, uh, give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Okay, first of all, I've already noticed that I like singing the word meditation over A minor better than I like singing C. Because it's a little bit more like introspective. There's something about that. So in my choice, I would go, I kind of like the A minor better. But maybe I would go, Give ear to my words, O oh Lord. Consider my meditation. And by the way, I went down. Okay, consider my meditation. Okay, there's something about A minor, like minor chords that tend to kind of like make you want to sink in deeper sort of melodically, and you'll notice when you start hearing, you've never thought about this before, and now you're going to be mad that you're thinking about it all the time. Um, so anyway, that gives you an idea. I'm going to do more of this in a minute, but, um, so, uh, I don't need that. See? Lovely. Only in 15 minutes. Okay, so, so let's, let's skip right into four and five, okay? So, so the three are the legal, four and five are not the legal, but I think that they're equally as important, and um, you guys are going to throw out a bunch of ideas, I think you should, and then I am going to actually show you that almost all of these things you're throwing out there fit in these five somehow. So why don't you guys try to guess what four and five is? Start giving some ideas. Yes? No. Tempo. I mean, that's good for Christian songs, oh, yeah. but, but, yeah. That, that goes into lyric. Oh. Tempo, that goes into one of mine, okay? Time signature. Time signature, okay, goes into one of mine. Sort of. What? Rhythm. Yeah, rhythm is it. And I choose rhythm over tempo or time signature, because you can have the same tempo and change the rhythm. You can have, this, you can have a different... Uh, time signature, and you can have almost the same rhythm. It's, it's because there's, you know, so rhythm is actually the heartbeat of the song more than it is actually um, like time signature and the tempo, because we all know we can play, trust me, if you have a drummer that doesn't play with the click, he's played a song in the wrong tempo before, okay? It's possible to do. So, I looked at him, but I wasn't meaning you. I wasn't meaning you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we just figured out rhythm. Okay, what's another one? What's the fifth one? Heart. Heart. Okay. Ceiling from Captain Planet. Heart and mood, they kind of fit. This this one's a tricky one. Keep on going. Theme. Theme goes into lyrics. Tone. Tone goes into the one that we haven't touched. But it also can go to harmony. Tone is harmony. But it also depends on what you mean by tone. <laughs> anyway, keep on going. Key. Key. Feeling. That's kind of melody and kind of harmony, you know. But it kind of, yeah, feeling, okay, that fits in my fifth one. Spirit. Spirit. Okay, I mean, that's, it's like the heart, fit. I don't know. Spirit, that's Jesus' songs. And we're talking about songs in general, although you know I'm talking about God. But, um, what? let's try one more. What? Theme. Theme. Yeah, we already did theme. That's in lyrics. The fifth one is the one that nobody remembers, or, or not remembers, but nobody actually chooses what? Form? No. No! Oh. <laughs> it's right. dynamic. Okay? And the reason why I choose dynamic out of all of these <clears throat> ones is because the way that you, like, actually when you're writing a song, you're going to change, and you change your dynamics, it is actually going to change your mood. It could change the tone. Um, what are some of the other ones I heard? There's a lot of them. Um, anyway, you can change the feeling. But you can change the feeling with, with the, a difference of harmony, with the difference of, of dynamic, okay? And so... Um, okay, so here's a good example for dynamics, okay? So we'll, we'll just do the everlasting God. So... 
Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord as we wait upon the Lord as we wait upon the Lord. Okay, first things first. Uh, I'm going strength, I'm going strength arise, so I'm going strength arise. So I'm definitely very clearly saying strength, okay? And that, they really wanted the first word of that, of that verse to be like kind of everything about the song in a lot of ways. Okay, not every song does this, but this one is written that way. So, strength arises as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait. Um, what's another theme that they wanted to have in this song? It's going to be, they want you to be waiting on the strength of the Lord, okay? So, some of the stuff in between, it matters, but you could just go, strength, waiting on the Lord, oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. It kind of could work, okay? So, uh, so that's just kind of keep that in mind. There's some stuff that's happening there. Uh, so, um, sing as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord. Where did I go with dynamics right there? This is what I can tell you. I know for a fact when he wrote the song, he did not do this. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord as we wait upon the Lord as we wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. You know, he didn't do that. He went, our God. that huge when it comes to the dynamics. And on top of it, if you notice, the melody goes up. So I go, strength arise, and I go, our God, that's the first time it goes, building forever. We're talking about big concepts here. We're talking about reigning forever, right? So those are dynamics, right? So um, also, too, um, you know, you can think of the harmony side of this, too, and, and he's, he's really keeping the tension. He doesn't want you to, like, this is not the end of the song. This is clearly the pre-chorus, okay? And that's because he goes, Our God, you reign forever. That doesn't sound like the chorus. Our hope, it doesn't, it doesn't resolve. It doesn't ever end anything. Ramping up, we're going God, right? Okay. Now, he does go down a little bit in the chorus, and I get that, but you get what I'm saying. There is this dynamic ramp that happens so that we can hit the chorus. So here's a few things that um, you could write down if you'd like. Um, uh, first of all, find the heartbeat of the song. So that means it's not just your tempo, not just whatever. It's, it's going to have something to do with the theme. Or it's going to have something to do with like the feeling, like when me and when me and Gabe wrote that song we played last night or two was it last night. <laughs> One thing is, is that we could not. We like. I think we even found a way to loop this, and we put down the guitar. And we just kind of walked around the room trying to like think of lyrics, looking like crazy people, I'm sure. But we, but we did like, and that's because we had found, even though this seems so simple, right? But we had found what, like everything about the song, we wanted, we wanted it to be like kind of like a march, you know. And I'm alive and I won't be new. When I move, all my strength in the you know. I never do. I don't know until Gabe starts singing it. When we right. together, you tend to not remember the lyrics that I wrote, and I tend to not remember the lyrics. <laughs> yes. I don't know why it, it works out, but I, I always sing whatever lyrics he wrote, and then he always sings the lyrics I wrote, and I can never remember his words. But anyway, so the, the point is, though, is that we had found the heartbeat of the song. That doesn't mean the heartbeat's going to be the beginning of the song like that one. But it will kind of give you, give you an idea. Once you kind of have, that's like the mood. It's like, I want this song to be celebratory. I want it to be a march. I want it to be something that's going to just, like, elevate who God is and what he's done for me, right? So come up with some kind of, like, 
whether it is, sometimes it's actually just a lyrical theme. Like sometimes it's like, you know, brokenness. And you're not going to go, I'm broken, yes I am. You're not going to do that, right? <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> yes, you have a question? I think a perfect example of what you're describing, it was last year at the leaders, pastors conference, you finished with a song that you had started about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. It was yeah. so fitting for the occasion. Oh, and, it, and I thought that, you know, for yeah. you to come up with that all of a sudden, obviously it came from feelings, it came from emotions, yeah. mm -hmm. it came from things that were going on there. I mean, I, actually, that, that, that song specifically, God downloaded it in the middle of the night, the night before. I mean, we had done the conference. I woke, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was like, on my phone, of course. I wasn't typing. And I wrote out all the words, and we literally sang it verbatim. I hadn't even picked up the guitar until I played. It was like, I have to do this. Okay, I think we got it. Let's do this. That's how I do it. The fact that it was good at all is surprising, honestly. Have you played it since? Yes. We're, we're going to do it tonight. We'll do it tonight. Right? We're going to do it tonight? Good tonight. Sure, we'll do it tonight. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, so uh, a few more things to write, and I know we got to be done. So um, feel free during the question and answer if you have more questions for songwriting, you can ask. And also, just find me. I'll, I'll be walking around. Uh, find the heartbeat of the song, and that can be a lot of things. If you have a theme, stick to it, okay? Like, I'll go with that brokenness thing again, okay? Or no, let's not go with brokenness. Let's just go with the cross, okay? Your theme is the cross. Stick with it. And what I mean by that is, like, you don't have to go into how he created, you know, the, the heavens and the earth and and, you know, how... Job got beat up and he was like the worst thing. And then and then the chorus talks about the cross. You don't have to do that. I know that it there are songs that break this rule. And I think because it's all biblical, we're Christians, we're gonna sing it. And we're like, yeah, awesome. But really great songs that are written um, really, really masterfully are very clear on what their theme is throughout the whole song. And so stick with your theme. Don't break the theme. Uh, and then also another one is resolve, okay? And I know this is super quick and I'm just throwing out these things, but resolve. Don't, like tension is okay, but really tension should be like the breaking of the rule. Like you're like, wow, I love this tension here. It shouldn't be that every part of your song has tension because then you'll never be able to finish the song, A, and then B, it's like the, the resolve is, is kind of what, what allows the, the, the parts to end the right way and everything. So resolve, okay? And then um, I'm just going to give you uh, a few different verse, um, like uh, stanzas, okay, for verses. Um, I'm going to give you a, a four of the most popular ones. And so if you really have never written a song and you don't know where to begin, here you go, Okay. Um, a, A, B, A, okay? All that means is that you're writing something, that thing rhymes with this thing, that thing also rhymes with the same, or no, sorry, A, A, B, A. So this thing, this rhymes with it, this doesn't, this goes back and rhymes with the first thing, okay? Or the second thing, or both, okay? Uh, a, B, A, B, the most simplest, most people write in this. It also can sound a little cheesy, okay? But this... Then this, then rhyme with the first, then rhyme with the second, okay? Most children's songs have that stanza, okay? Uh, there are actually a lot of hymns that have that as well. And then there's a lot of hymns that are like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, J, L, M, <laughs> And there's no rhyme at all. Uh, and then there is A, 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 B, okay? That seems to be a lot of like kind of popular worship songs recently is where you, you kind of like generally run the first three and then that last one is like a tag or something, okay? Uh, and then there's A, B, C, A. So you start with a line, 
then you go B, you can do whatever you want, C, you can do whatever you want, and then A, you rhyme back with, or you actually you can say the same exact thing as the first line, okay? So um, there's that. One last thing. Can I do one last thing? Do one last thing. I'm really like totally trying to give them something to walk away with. So <laughs> chorus is king. Just write these things down, and if you have any questions later on, ask me. Chorus is king. Verse is the journey to the king. Okay? A pre-chorus is the bridge. And don't be, like, confused with the fact that we're going to say bridge. Uh, pre-chorus is the bridge from some part of the journey, but you did not quite get to the king, so instead you take the bridge to get to the king so that you can go back over the bridge and continue the journey to hopefully make it around back town to the king. Okay? Well said. Okay? Who's the fish? And then, write yeah. that down. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually wrote down, pre-course is the bridge from the some part of the journey to the king. Okay? But my longer explanation was probably better. And then, bridge is um, what you brought to the king. Okay? It's the gift you're bringing to the king. Or it is the elevation of the king. So you've already said the chorus many times, or you've already like you know, you've explained what you're wanting to say about the king. Then you've said the king, and then all of a sudden you're like, "But the king is way cooler." And here we go. Here's the bridge. So that's kind of the idea. Hopefully, you can walk away with something good from that. So awesome, guys! Thanks.